Hey guys, MVC here for the Scampro Gaming Tab for something a little bit different. Today we're going to be taking a look at free software, OBS Project, that allows PC gamers to live stream their content to Twitch TV and the different encoding options available to you depending on your system setup. So X264 for both Intel and AMD CPUs, the typical encoder that 99.9% .9 of people probably use when they stream from their PC. Intel Quick Sync, which is for Quick Sync supported CPUs use in the 3rd, 4th and 5th gen i5 and i7 range. Only important to point out for those CPUs in that range that have integrated graphic chips with that quick sync support. And on top of that, NVIDIA ENC, NVENC, which uses the NVIDIA encoder on the graphics card. So if your graphics card supports Shadow Play, it's likely you've got it, but in other words, 600 series or above. We're going to be taking a look at the three different encoding options, the quality hit, and performance hit you get when using each of them and just compare them with one another and which one you're going to be using when and why and hopefully at home I'm going to give you guys a good idea as to which encoder you should potentially use yourself but without further ado we're going to jump into a quick run through of my OBS setup then have a look at the results before coming back right at the end with my final thoughts feelings and conclusions as to which ones I would personally use and to be honest I already know it's just I need to show you guys before I actually tell you my thoughts but yeah enjoy the video Okay, so let's quickly run through our OBS settings for both X264, QuickSync, and NVENC, so you guys know what we're working with here today. Before we do that, I'm going to run through my scenes and sources, show you the kind of stuff you can do as a PC game at live streaming their content. So, for example, if you have an Xbox One or a PS4, you're going to be kind of limited. You might have the PlayStation 4 camera or Xbox Connect, but you can't really do any of this cool stuff. So, you might need a capture card. But if we get preview scene, we've got our splash scene here, and we've got our text that automatically updates through a program called SNAS. In here we can do time, date and countdown, text line changes, all this kind of cool stuff which link to text documents on your PC. So for example in holding monitor 1, because there's a bug with night depth, I have to quickly do this. We've got our webcam, we've got our monitor capture in the upper right, we've got our Scam Pro Gaming logo, we've got the local time, we've got all my social media information and we've got the text chat from Twitch chat automatically updating for everybody to see, which is kind of neat for everybody on the stream to see their name and their messages that come to me. Uh, we've got our monitor capture, we've got a duplicate scene here with game capture if we're using that. Our sponsor logo is on the right hand side, a ScamPro gaming logo, and of course my personal logo. Down here we've got our single game capture only setups and my, my webcam. And right at the bottom, monitor, which is the one we have been using for this video. Uh, if you are setting things up like webcams and capture cards, I definitely recommend you set them up as global sources so they stay persistent through every scene. And yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. So I definitely recommend if you do have a console, you pick up a capture card and get software like OBS you can do a lot of cool stuff with it but in settings let's go through the things that are going to matter the things you might need to replicate at home so first up encoding tab we've got our three encoding options at the top x264 which is Intel and AMD we've got our Intel quick sync and we've got our Nvidia NVENC now the AMD equivalent of the graphics encoder is not available in OBS at the moment but there's no reason to say it won't be in future it's just important to point out that Right now, you can't do that. Now, if Intel Quick Sync happens to be disabled, for me, on an Asus motherboard, I had to go into the BIOS and enable iGPU multi monitor, which you can see here. It might be slightly different depending on your motherboard manufacturer, so do have a quick browse and try and find it. And again, you are going to need a third, fourth, or fifth gen i5 or i7 to enable it, and all of those i5s and i7s will have quick sync supported graphics chips on board. You're going to need to make sure your CPU has an integrated graphics chip in that respect, but you can enable it through this. And again, NVIDIA NVENC, if it's grayed out, you probably don't have a supported graphics card or you might need to update your graphics drivers. Now, you can do this through NVIDIA GeForce Experience. And again, it's very important here that you disable shadow play. So make sure you're up to date and then go shadow play at the top right and make sure this is disabled. Otherwise, you won't be able to use the encoder because it's currently being used elsewhere. So make sure this is disabled and uh, then you're going to be able to use it. But yeah, those are our three settings. So we'll start off X264. We'll go into the video tab first. As you can see, we've got 1080p currently set up. Now, when we change to 720p, we actually do this. But what I definitely recommend if you are streaming yourself is you always leave this at 1080p, set this to 720, and 
the best filter here. It's just but for the purpose of the video, we're simply changing the upper section instead. Now, under the advanced section, we have constant frame rate, meaning it always runs at 60 FPS. And we have our X264 preset at very fast with all the recommended Twitch settings, such as keyframe interval at two. So under encoding, or sorry, under video, we have 60 FPS and under encoding 3500 with a constant bit rate. Now for quick sync, if we go into the advanced setting, we have best quality. Uh, and again, kind of makes sense. 1080p 60 FPS runs it just fine at 3500 bit rate. Uh, back to encoding and into NVIDIA NVENC and going to the advanced tab, we have NV default. Now I found using high quality, low latency, 1080p 60fps wasn't possible. It started to jitter around a hell of a lot and using streaming just refused to work. So I've used NV default for both 720 and 1080. And again, that's the only thing we are changing here. But if we come back to the encoding tab, that pretty much wraps it up for OBS settings. So for those three, that's exactly what we're using. And I hope this section will at least give you a bit of an insight to my OBS setup that we have got. And again, 3500 is the maximum recommended for Twitch. But yeah, let's jump into, I guess, our results. So for our test methodology, we've taken the FAPS benchmark tool on a Counter-Strike Global Offensive demo featuring Dignitas device and ran the minimum, maximum and average FPS values three times each. And rather than taking the average, we've just simply listed them on the screen here for you to take from it what you will. But essentially, we could determine that in terms of performance here, X264 was definitely the most, but at the same time provided the best quality. Now, unfortunately, definitely dipping below my 144 hertz refresh rate at 1080p at both 720 and 1080 and as such I'd be looking to use QuickSync or NVENC for competitive streaming. However, with that said, NVIDIA ENC, which you'll see in a minute, just looked significantly worse and wasn't something I was willing to use. However, did provide the best FPS output. So depending on what CPU and overclock you are using, NVENC is definitely a viable option in terms of performance. But for me, in quality output just wasn't worth it. Now, you can either skip ahead to my final thoughts, feelings and conclusion, or you can continue to watch and skip through bit by bit each individual test and look at the quality output. But X264 first, QuickSync second, NVENC third for quality. So moving into the quality examples, you can go ahead and skip to my final thoughts if you'd like, but we're gonna run through both 720 and 1080 using the free encoding options, starting off with not streaming performance results, recording separately via fraps, almost lossless quality before YouTube's done its re-encoding, so to speak. And then you're gonna be able to compare all the different encoding options. Again, after YouTube's done its re-encoding thing here for YouTube, and kind of make up your own mind as to what you think is better. Personally, like I said, X264 first, QuickSync second, NVIDIA ENC third, and that's the order of the videos and clips they're gonna be in as well anyway. But yeah, enjoy the segment, and I'll meet you back at the end for my final thoughts.
Deploying flashbang. Deploying flashbang. Laying down smoke. Flashbang. 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 So what are my final thoughts then for X264, for Quick Sync and for Shadow Play? Well let's start off by first eradicating Shadow Play or NVENC sorry from the live streaming side of things. 3500 bitrate just is not enough and the quality just does not compete with Quick Sync and the performance hit versus the quality hit between those two, you're gonna pick Quick Sync every time at 3500 bitrate. But Quick Sync does max out at about 1080p 60 FPS, whereas Shadow Play or NVENC will go all the way up when local recording to 4K resolutions and on the 700 series 50K bitrate and on the 900 series even higher. So for local recording, you're always going to go for shadow play, but for streaming, particularly competitive games where you want little to no performance hit, you're going to be picking quick sync pretty much every day of the week. However, when it comes to playing casually, when it comes to just playing with viewers or maybe streaming a tournament where you want the maximum quality, and I don't mean playing in the tournament, but streaming a tournament of other people playing, go with X264. Take the performance hit and give that huge quality boost that you will get with X264. 
Now, the final thing I want to kind of end on is 720p versus 1080p at 60 FPS because 3,500 bit rate, 720p, 60 FPS will actually look better 9 out of 10 times. However, when it comes to playing games like League of Legends, Dota 2, and World of Warcraft games where you've got little numbers on the screen and also minimal movement, or even FPS games where you've got flat walls such as the new season in Counter Strike Global Offensive or Quake Live with it all pick mipped out, you might get away with 1080p 60 FPS at 3,500 bitrate. But for most FPS games and fast paced games where a lot is happening on the screen, there's a lot of action, you probably find that 720p 60 FPS is the way you want to go most of the time. It's only 1080p really becomes a thing when you're dealing with those small numbers. And to be honest, what you could potentially do is record to a separate hard drive using Shadowplay all of your gameplay and then record stream, sorry, using QuickSync at that 3,500 bit rate. That's a possibility. And then you get the best of both worlds. Maximum quality for YouTube plus lower quality and reduced performance here for streaming. So for me, casual gameplay, every day of the week go for X264. Competitive gameplay, to be on the safe side, to not dip below your monitor's refresh rate, go with QuickSync. And for local recording, go with Shadowplay. NVENC or your AMD equivalent. But yeah, I've been MVC here for the Scan Pro Game Heads Up. I hope the video has helped to some degree. And if you have any questions or comments, as always, just add them below. But for now, we'll catch you next time. Thank you.